My name is Rudy Lopez. I'm the executive director for Interfaith Worker Justice. Amen. And the name says it all. Amen. So it is faith community working hand in hand with workers in order to be able to change working conditions, improve worker pay, but more than anything, being able to change the perception of the value of a worker and the work that they provide. And I want to have church continue on. If you allow me to go to a little scripture, is that okay? Now to the one who works. His wages are not counted as a gift, but his due says Romans 4 4 Let's see what Malachi says I will be a swift witness against those who oppress the higher worker and his wages says the Lord now let's finish up with James here behold the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields which you kept back by fraud they are crying out against you and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord. And he is not pleased. The beauty of church and faith in the labor movement is that you can't separate the two. They're one and the same. Because... Faith values and labor values are the same values. They're one and the same. And when you look up on this stage and you look up across this audience, you may see people from different parts of the country and different faith traditions, but we are all one in our same heart. We are identical because the values that we have are the same. What kind of values are those? Yes, they are about better working conditions and people being able to get paid time off when they're sick or when they're having a baby. Yes, it's about people getting paid overtime fairly. But it comes down to dignity, justice, and a little respect. See, that's what workers really want. They want to be respected. You know, the work that we do, we uh, have 64 affiliates throughout the country. And one of the groups that we work with in Northwest Arkansas, they work in the poultry industry. And we went down to, to hear the stories of these workers. And what we were told is, yes, they work in dangerous places where they have to worry about slipping and falling and hurting themselves. They have carpal tunnel because of the motions of their hands, and they lose fingers on the line. They don't get respected. They get paid low wages. They work long hours. But the number one complaint, as bad as all that is, the number one they complaint that they had was that they're not allowed to go to the bathroom. Now, yes, they're given two 15-minute breaks, but when you only have one men's and one women's bathroom and you have 50 workers lying deep, you don't get to make it. So it's not uncommon for these workers to be on the line and wear adult undergarments, these depends, to save a little dignity. See, this is the Memphis we're talking about today. And these brothers and sisters may or may not have the documents that say that they can be in this country, but they have the most important document, the document that tells them that they are a child of God and are due with respect and dignity that we are all afforded. See, a lot of times people think, well, we need to do outreach to the faith community. We need to reach out to them. We actually should think about it a little differently. How can we do in-reach to our own churches that we belong to? How do we go into the places that we are already there? Because each one of you 
are connected to some place you call home. I know growing up in a small, scrappy little steel town called East Chicago, Indiana, next to Gary, Indiana. Anybody here know about that place? Where I still live. There were two pillars of our community. One was the church, and the other was the union. These were places of security, places where you called home because they shared common values. And the deterioration or the erosion or the attack on unions has really been an attack on community. Because when you think about it, let's go back and do a little bit of a history lesson here. Let's go back to one of my favorite presidents, Ronald Reagan. Okay, I, I hope you got the irony there, right? <laughs> so Ronald Reagan was a master of using code words to, to divide. There's a brother of mine, a professor, uh, Professor Lopez, which is no relation of mine. He has a book called Dog Whistle Politics. And in that book, he talks about how people use code words in order to divide people in community. And Reagan was a master. He would get in front of a group of white working class voters and he would say, I know how you feel. Work all week long and then go stand in line to buy hamburger when there's some young buck in front of you with food stamps about to buy steak. I know what you mean, I know how you feel, and I'm with you. What do you think he was trying to say? And these are the things that they got away with. But now the presidential candidates aren't even speaking in code words anymore, are they? See, and then as Reagan continued with his march forward, he began to dismantle community when he came after organized labor. And it's no, he should have shut it down. And then we've got the ascension of Wall Street during the 80s as well, which arguably was most, the most materialistic time in our country's history. The 80s where Wall Street and the individual swept throughout our country. And it attacked the very fabric. It attacked the community which kept us together. So we're now faced with the situation. We have an important decision to make. Do we buy in to the idea of let me get what I can for myself while I can get it? Or am I my brother's and sister's keeper? You see, the idea of community is something that's embedded in all of us. I'm not one that thinks that we have to convince other people that we're right and they're wrong. Because I know where we are. I really believe that our brothers and sisters who have lost their way, who are trying to dismantle organized labor, I really believe that in the depth of their heart, the truth is really there. See, if we believe that God is in each one of us, and I do, then the truth has to be there. It's that these brothers and sisters need to be exercised, as we were told this morning. A lot of exorcism needs to take place. We can call it a reorienting to their true nature. Because some of these brothers and sisters have lost their way. Now, the power of story, as we know, is something that can move mountains, can change laws, can shift hearts. But I think we need to go a little further, brothers and sisters. Yes, it's important for each one of us to
to be able to share our story. But I also think we need to testify and witness. And the reason we do is because sharing someone's story can inspire charity, but not necessarily justice. But when people see not just your humanity through your story, but the divinity through your witness, then justice comes. So how do we have our fallen away brothers and sisters see the divinity in each one of us? That's where you all and we as church in the broad sense of what church is, whether it's a synagogue, mosque, or church, that's where we come in. Amen. Amen. So let me leave you with this. I believe that right now, whether you have a brother or a sister who's dying in the desert of Arizona or a young black man who's getting shot in the streets of Chicago, it's the same fight. It's not a fight around racial justice or gender justice. It's not a fight even about worker justice. It's one fight about justice. And there's a right and wrong. So brothers and sisters, yes, it is Dr. King's day. And I want to leave you with one of his more famous quotes. I'm going to leave you with two real quick. You all remember the quote of the street, the street sweeper? Yes, this was in Chicago, Illinois. That's why I got to say it. So Dr. King says, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets as Michelangelo painted. As Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts in heaven will pause and say, there lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. And then he went on to say, no work is insignificant. No work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. May God bless you all. Amen.